Franklin Pierce was the 14th President of the United States of America. Born on November 23, 1804, and raised in rural New Hampshire. Before ever being a part of the elections in 1852, Franklin Pierce was a well-known lawyer during his early career and was also part of in the New Hampshire legislature and had been elected to U.S. Congress where he served as both congressman and senator. President Pierce was not a well-known during the elections. By surprisingly being placed in the 1852 presidential election, he won the support of Virginia with all 15 of its votes. Franklin Pierce was handsome, sociable, a fine speaker, and a Mexican-American war veteran, all the characteristics that were needed for a new member of the Democratic Party during the elections. Although President Pierce didn't do much campaigning whatsoever, it still will help him win the election against Winfield Scott, his commander during the Mexican-American War and rival and opponent in the presidential elections of 1852. Pierce's campaign was considered ludicrous, ridiculous and uninteresting com presidential campaign ever. But with that being said, Franklin Pierce won the election easily in a contest in which nearly 70% of the eligible voters cast ballots and had majorities in both houses of Congress. President Franklin Pierce would end up being the youngest president today. When Franklin Pierce took office, the nation was enjoying an era of great economic prosperity and relative tranquility. President Franklin Pierce's major accomplishments include the constant purchase and the Kansas Nebraska Act of 1854. He was also responsible for the Oster Manifesto, which provoked a significant negative response. He was unable to defuse the tension leading up to the impending civil war. Is the constant purchase. The United States brought territory from Mexico that later became part of New Mexico and Arizona. The purchase was named after James Gunston, who negotiated. It cost $50 million in $1853, added 29,600 square miles to the United States, and established the western boundary. Pierce also supported the publication of the Oster Manifiesto in the New York Times, another act that locked him support from his party in the North. The Oster Manifiesto suggests that the United States should attack Cuba if Spain refused to sell it to the United States. The Kansas-Nebraska Act, proposed by Senator Stephen Douglas in 1854, the bill formally organized Kansas and Nebraska into territories, opening them to settlements and railroad buildings. It also repealed the ban on slavery in Kansas mandated by Missouri Compromise in 1820, declaring that citizens of each territory, not Congress, had the right to choose whether the territory would allow slavery. Peer support helped push the Kansas-Nebraska Act through Congress, while shared the oppositions to the bill lead to a collating industry anti-slavery Democrats, free soldiers, and forming wings to form a new Republican Party. Kansas soon became a battleground for sectional tension, as thousands of so-called border ruffians streamed in from Missouri to, to, re, to elect a pro-slavery legislature in March 1855, making a mockery of popular, popular, making a mockery of popular sovereignty. When anti-slavery settles in Kansas, form a rival government, and soft admissions to the Union as a free state, violence broke out between the free staters and their pro-slavery opponents. While peers resisted sending federal troops to Kansas, tensions reached new heights in Washington. With South Carolina Representative Preston Brooks assaulting Senator Charles Summers an abolitionist of the Senate flood an abolitions of the Senate floor in 1856 for his ineptitude in handling the bleeding Kansas situation Pierce was denied the democratic presidential renomination in 1853 Franklin Pierce became president at a time of apparent tranquility 
despite the fact that two months before he took office, he and his wife saw their 11-year-old son killed when their train was wrecked, which caused Franklin Pierce to enter nervously and exhausted. Another factor that made it hard in Pierce's administration was the death of his vice president, William Rufus King, leaving President Pierce without a vice president during his four-year administration. Franklin Pierce was one of one of the least known, least liked, and least successful presidents in American history. President Pierce had a heavy drinking problem before his administration that will also cost his reputation after. Franklin Pierce's administration spanned a turbulent period in the life of the nation. North-South polarization reached new extremes in part to Pierce's failure to understand the death of free soil sentiment in the North. The Kansas and Nebraska Act and its aftermath made civil war likely, if not inevitable. The term bleeding Kansas came to symbolize the failures of Pierce's administration. The failure of the Kansas and Nebraska Act to defuse the slavery issue was Pierce's downfall. Pierce pushed for its passage and contributed to the problem by failing to act quickly when violence broke out in Kansas. Franklin Pierce's administration's record on foreign affairs was also disappointing, with only a few successes to its credit. Pierce was incapable of steaming the march towards civil war. This, in turn, caused Pierce to be the only elected president who saw but did not win his party's nomination for the second term, making it a short administration from 1853 through 1857. After his administration, President Franklin Pierce who had been a heavy drinker for much of his life, died of severe cirrhosis of the liver in 1869.